What's good, boys? We got light meat fireworks in this one. If you're new here, slap that meat. Meat Boy MMA. We're bringing locks and laps only in. Shout out to our latest sub, Mr. Amy's, and all 457 of you meaty sweaties out there. We really appreciate it. And this is an absolute banger of a contest. We got the Monkey King, Jordan Levitt, taking on Trey Ogden, who is making his debut. He's 15 and 4. This is a guy who picked up some wins in LFA. Uh, one of those being over downtown TJ Brown, which I think is a win that's kind of aged nicely. And he did manage to lose two straight to uh, Thomas Gifford, both by first round submission, like 53 seconds apart, interestingly enough. And we know that uh, Gifford didn't have the greatest of UFC tenures, but since those losses, he's won five of six, uh, Ogden has. And the low loss coming by against Nick Browns, and his wins are against decent competition. And we know he's kind of a, a gritty grappler, very dynamic grappler. And you can say the same thing about his opponent, the Monkey King, who at nine and one is very... Very slick, very slippery, very slimy, and uh, we saw that most recently, especially when he fought Matt Sales, and he won by that inverted triangle choke, not something you see too, too frequently, and we remember the win before that was against Matt Wyman, when he literally just picked the dude up, slammed him on his head, and Wyman was out cold, so that one was kind of difficult to watch, to be honest, it was uh, truly brutal, so we know that Levitt is a guy who is down to uh, insert some interesting techniques and interesting tactics for sure, so in this battle of the grab, Grapplers, Trey Ogden making his debut, or the Monkey King. Who are you going to take in this uh, light meat matchup? Yeah, no, this is such a great light meat matchup. Um, you know, I gotta go with the Monkey King. That is my boy. You guys already know. Uh, you know how meat goes. I, I gotta go with the Monkey King. Big fan of the shows, the movies. So anyone named the Monkey King, I gotta take him. I think he gets sub. I'm with Tapology. Um, dude's a slippery little snack. And uh, you know, he's young, 26. He's only getting better and better. So I just, this is really a real levels test for Trey. You know, if he can starch Jordan, I will be impressed because no one else has been able to do it. And uh, his only loss comes from Absolute Savage, and it went unanimous. So it'll be very interesting to see this goes. The longer it goes, I got Monkey King though by by a submission second round. Yeah, it's interesting you say submission because Tapology is kind of singing a similar tune, right? 76% is Rollo Jordan Levitt. Majority of it is Copper. They think that that submission is most likely and makes sense because Levitt is he's very sneaky, very slippery. Uh, he's able to get you down and then when there, he can just sort of uh, assert his dominance and really implement his game plan. But are you at all worried about, you know, obviously every fight stands on the, starts on the feet and Trey Ogden is a guy who, you know, he's a dynamic grappler himself. Most of his wins come by submission, but he's also extremely confident competent on the feet uh any worries any concerns if you're bullish on monkey king that uh perhaps trey Ogden might have the advantage on the feet and could sleep the monkey king oh uh, he could sleep him but i just don't see it i think the monkey king is just too good he has not been slept in the ufc yet so i don't see this being the one i see him getting another slick slippery monkey king sub submission in fashion with a little split celebration yeah, very nice, and I've been interested to see how the line has sort of adjusted in this contest, because initially Monkey King opened as a decent favorite, and since then it's absolutely flipped, and Trey Ogden is the one that's garnering some of the scroll from Vegas. So what are your thoughts on the line movement, and uh, any reason why you think it would have flipped like that? Uh, you know, the only thing I can think of why it flipped is because I think they truly respect Trey's power in his stand-up game, and they might think this might be a Ryan Hall versus Elliot Teporia moment, which, hey, you know, wouldn't surprise me there, but I think the Monkey King is just that good, and I think he's improved. I mean, he's 26 going on 40. Dude looks old, but man, is he young. So he's a young prospect. He's going to be in the UFC for a long time, as long as he keeps getting these Ws and getting those slick, stylistic submissions. Yeah, if he keeps getting these Ws for sure, and that's obviously no easy feat to accomplish in the UFC lightweight division for sure. And in this contest, although Trey Ogden is, uh, you know, primarily a grappler and does his work down there, I think it's going to be advantageous for him to try and keep this thing standing. And ultimately, I think Monkey King is getting slept. I think Trey Ogden is going to sleep him with something heavy. Uh, I just like his ability to stay, keep this fight on the feet. He's going to have the half-inch reach advantage. He's going to have the two-inch height advantage. And usually, I don't know, Monkey King is a, a guy who's able to use length to kind of frustrate guys and ultimately take them down and if Trey Ogden's able to stiff arm those then I think he's going to make Levitt go stiff via his arm so we'll see how this one goes down for sure but what are your thoughts am I tripping on this one any any chance Trey Ogden gets this done for his debut no he definitely could get it done uh, anyone can get it done when you're standing up fighting 
But if it hits the mat, I think Monkey King has this in the bag with a slicky, slippery slope of a submission. Um, but yeah, throw in the throw in the comments, you guys. Uh, who you got? You got Monkey King, six, uh, you know, 26 going on 40, or you got Trey?